Katrina, only on YouTube.com. It all started when I was on a 30-hour train ride from Oregon to California. With so much time on my hands, I got the chance to think more intrinsically about myself. I realized that I spent much more time than necessary on my phone. This made it hard to enjoy the little things in life and brought out the worst in me. I decided to delete all social media from my phone for a month. And here's what happened. I guess it's come to the time where all the apps must go. I've started the screen recording on my iPhone, I guess so we can see the monumental act of deleting all my social media apps from my iPhone to begin this experiment of digital minimalism. Let's begin. I have all my social media apps in this little folder here. Yeah, I'm just gonna delete them all. So we're gonna do a little Thanos Avengers snap of the finger and bye bye to all these little apps in here so hey Thanos I'm going to be deleting them for 30 days so here we go this is very saddening but I'm actually a little bit happy because I want to see all these go let's see Facebook time to delete yeah, I deleted that one I deleted that one goodbye my beloved Instagram I don't use Tumblr so I guess I'll just leave that there but Twitter's gotta go I'm leaving Snapchat because I do log in once a day to send a snap to my close friend. I have a 2000 and something day streak. I don't send anything else or I don't open anything. So that's just a little exception. Is that all? Yeah, these other ones are like just whatever. But Reddit, I'm leaving there because Reddit is technically it's a social media. But technically, I still do learn a lot from Reddit. And I think that is all the social media that I have on my iPhone. How do I feel about it? I think I feel cathartic. I was checking my screen time and dare I say it's horrifying to see how many hours I spend on my phone. And I think that this would be a good little experiment to test out how I feel without social media. I've got a little too much going on up here. And I need some time to just be alone with my brain. This is day one of me doing this experiment. See how it goes. We got our summer drink and we're walking around. Seeing wild peacocks. <laughs> walking around in neighborhood. It's like 9 a.m. I just wanted to check in and let y'all know how my first week went yeah so in the beginning it was really hard for me to adapt to not having my phone as a distraction and not automatically unlocking it and then like going to the apps i think during the first couple of days i slipped up a lot it's just like automation i'm automatically oh i'm bored or i'm uncomfortable like i'm just gonna use my phone and tune out the world so i would do that and i would open my phone and there's nothing there <laughs> because i deleted them all before i even started this journey i watched other people do this experiment and they were right every time that you feel uncomfortable or you're like bored or you just don't know what to do with your time you automatically default to your phone and you just waste your time on these apps and I oh which I am now seeing for myself that that is what I'm doing and I don't like it <laughs> and then another big thing for me was killing off my snapchat streaks I've been using snapchat since what like high school so late and a lot of these people I don't really talk to anymore but I did have like a high snap streak with them even though I haven't really talked to these people in a long time I still maintain snap streaks with them which I guess in reality is not exactly keeping up with them you literally just send like a black screen and you say streaks that's not exactly keeping in touch with I basically 
sent like a Snapchat to all the people that I had streaks with and I said, I'm not using Snapchat anymore. So this will be a goodbye for me. After I sent it, I began to feel it's a sense of relief and like a weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. And another emotional aspect that I tackled was I guess some of my biggest character flaws, if I can say so myself. <laughs> two things. Number one is FOMO. Number two is jealousy. They kind of go hand in hand. With FOMO, I kind of felt like I was scared of missing out. But after doing it, I didn't have FOMO anymore because I couldn't see what my friends were doing. Like that saying says, out of sight, out of mind. It has relieved a lot of, I guess, feelings of jealousy that I usually have towards people that I see online. I don't have to keep tabs on irrelevant people or check up on people that I feel envious towards. I just don't care anymore. Sometimes I care too much and that kind of spills over into my personal life and makes me feel inadequate about myself, things like that. So let's go on to the physical aspect. Physically, I guess I've been able to sleep better. I don't use my phone before night times. I settle into bed with like a book. I also bought this little book lamp. I just clip it onto the book and then I just turn it on. And in the morning, I also try not to use my phone in the morning, but sometimes I have to use it to turn off the alarm and then I see all the notifications and I get curious. Implementing these things like they helped me feel so much better in the mornings. I don't feel as tired usually every night. Or even though I sleep seven, eight hours, I would wake up and I would feel like so groggy and like I want to go back to sleep. But with doing these things, I wake up very refreshed and as I should be, you know, I sleep for eight hours. I don't need to feel like I need to go back to sleep, but that lazy side of me. And lastly, I guess close it off. I know all of you have been wondering what the heck is on my wrist. During this week, I found out that I would keep going back to my phone to check the time. So I've got a watch. I went back to a more analog way of identifying time. And now I have this on my wrist. At least it's not a sundial, sis. It's not an Apple Watch because, like I said, we're not embracing technology. We're going back to the basics. So, yeah, that is the end of week one. You in the backyard and you're all fine in the summer. Hello everyone, it's week three in my digital minimalist journey. I literally went to the mall and usually when you go to the mall, you know, you gotta come out with something. You Today was actually the first time that I didn't buy anything and if you know me, you know I'm a shopaholic. So late. Just wanted to update y'all because I didn't buy anything at the mall. I'm shook too. <laughs> okay, bye. So can we post it? Post it on where? On YouTube. My little land! My little land! What are we doing, Hunter? We're at um, Yago. Our first ride at yeah. Legoland. a lot of pond! I've reached the end of my one month experiment on digital minimalism. Let me spill the tea for y'all. Here we go. Yes, Queen Skinny Legend Versace boots the house. The main takeaway from not having any social media is that I've gotten a greater sense of control for my life. I don't feel as dependent on the dopamine kick or the slot machine feature of social media. And let me explain to y'all what that is. It's basically where the Silicon Valley tech bros 
succeeded in putting a slot machine in all of our pockets. One example of this is the introduction of the like feature on Facebook. Thumbs up. As this feature was introduced, you post a picture on Facebook or you post a status and you never know how many people or who is going to like it. This kind of cycle of like unpredictable positive reinforcement and like positive feedback that you're getting from this like button, it gives you that dopamine in that moment. Like, oh, this person liked my post. I feel happy. And then you're just left wondering who else is going to like it or is this other person going to like it or you know how many likes am I going to get this kind of cycle is similar to gambling you put money in a slot machine and you just press the button or you pull the lever or whatever and you never know if you're going to win or not the inconsistency of you winning it kind of draws you back in every time it basically creates for unpredictable pseudo pleasure for yourself like you never know if you're going to win or if you're going to lose another thing that I basically learned from this book is that these social media apps they're built to suck your attention why are you built like that that's how these people make money by getting you to stay for as long as possible on these apps there's like a quote that was included in this book by sean parker who is the founding president of facebook and he said that the thought process that went into building these apps facebook being the first of them was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible and that means we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while because someone liked or commented on a photo or a post or whatever. So with that quote, it's basically telling us that even the founding president of Facebook knows how powerful these apps are in rewiring your brain to like crave this dopamine hit. That's my little spiel on the summary of this book and the basis behind this experiment. Let me get into the nitty gritty of it, the pros and the cons and just the habits that I gained from this experiment. So the pros, disclaimer, I've got a long list of them, but it'll maybe convince you. So the first thing is that without social media, I felt like I had an increase in my own self-confidence and I didn't feel as self-conscious. I'm someone that feels pretty self-conscious, but without social media, I'm not posting anything and I'm not posting any stories or Instagram posts or whatever. Like there's nothing for people to judge me on. So I felt much more myself. I know that I'm a pretty unique, cool person and I don't need the validation of like people online to tell me that. So increased self-confidence and a decrease in self-consciousness. The next thing is that I felt like my head was a lot clearer and I had a lot more time in my day. Going back to the book, the author Cal Newport mentions that once you give up social media, you kind of realize that you have a lot more time in your day. Before I used to spend like double digits, 9, 10 hours on social media and just scrolling on my phone. When you cut that out, you're left with just time to do whatever you need to do. Definitely felt more productive and I wasn't distracted as often because I had nothing to be distracted with like I have nothing on my phone so sorry another one that is important is that I also try to spend more time with the people that I love I began to be more intentional about the people that I hang out with this book by Oliver Berkman I think it's called time management for mortals he basically tells us what we all know time is not infinite you only have a set number of weeks years months on this earth and if you live up to 80 years old you'll have about 4,700 weeks so you only have very limited time on this earth and to make the best out of it you can't be spending 12 hours scrolling on your phone for what and that's the elitism coming out right here and I, oh. that's something i'm going to touch on in the con section with that in mind you know i've tried to become more present for people and for things that are not going to happen again and things that are bound to end so for example i tried to be more present in hanging out with my nephews and my niece because they're not going to stay young forever they're all babies to me but soon they're going to be full-on teenagers so i tried to spend as much time with them as possible with this also means spending more time with my parents the harsh reality is that they're not going to be around forever and i want to spend as much time with them as possible and you know going to places where they spontaneously decide to go to we're going to florida in the next couple days so stay tuned for that vlog another thing is i've started to stop being so nosy about other people they are all irrelevant to my life. I don't know why I used to care so much about like what other people are doing, checking up on their Instagram stories or looking at their Instagram posts, when in reality, I could care less. These people I have not talked to in years and years and years. Why do I care what the heck they're freaking eating on a Sunday afternoon? Irrelevant. So yeah, I used to be so nosy. I used to be a lurker. I used to be literally the FBI investigations. I could find out what your friend's ex-boyfriend's new boo was and what she was doing. Slay.
FBI, hire me. I feel much more at peace with this like disassociation from these random people on Instagram. It just allows me to focus on myself more. As you should, sister. Thank you. Another pro that I gained from this is appreciating and understanding the value of having quiet time. So with this experiment, I began to implement a designated quiet time where I don't have any intention or purpose behind it. I'm just alone with myself and my thoughts. This has really given me a lot of like introspection on my life and just like check in with myself, which is something that I can appreciate and something that I didn't really do before. So not to sound all about it but quiet time is important and now we're going to kind of segue into habits a habit that i kind of picked up was having a better morning routine I don't use my phone in the morning so i don't spend a large amount of time just scrolling in bed i try to get up and get my day started another habit that i obtained during this experiment was that i read a lot more i used to be a really big bookworm growing up with this experiment i had to find things to supplement my time that i now have being away from my phone i've become more intentional about reading so i've read at least 10 books in the past month i think which is kind of amazing to me it's a lot more than i read last year and i documented my reading in the goodreads 2022 reading challenge i highly recommend goodreads and adding friends on there because it's what keeps you accountable and it's what makes the app usable oh and i also picked up the habit of journaling and like writing things down in my little favorite moleskin journal i just write like my to-do task and things like that every single night i would just think about what i had to get done the next day and then i would write it down or i would write down little things that like i want to remember and now we're going to get into the complete opposite of what we just went through which is the cons of this experiment and these are not so bad they're probably mild in comparison to the pros so the pros definitely outweigh the cons but i just gotta be honest and transparent with y'all the first major con that i felt was that i began to develop a sense of elitism oh, look what you made me do. this is so bad i've just gotten so elitist that i don't use social media anymore that i have become unjustifiably annoyed at other people when they use their cell phones when we're hanging out or when people spend such a big amount of their free time on their phones for example my partner i've been nagging him a lot more about his cell phone usage when in reality this is not my fight this is not my battle does she understand it's not their fight it is and if he wants to do that he can i've become more elitist and it's not good but with every con there's a solution so my solution for this is that i'm trying to keep myself in check not everyone wants to be preached at about how destructive social media is for you not everyone wants to hear that and it's the honest truth but people are people and sometimes you can't change their mind hashtag taylor Another con that I found with this experiment is that I began to miss out on some of the difficult and happy moments in the lives of people that I'm not super close to, but I still care about. For example, I didn't know that this person that I knew got married during the time period that I was off. So when I opened Instagram for the first time one month later, I was like, oh my gosh, this person got married and I didn't even know. And I was all late in my congratulations. So sorry. My solution for this is to carefully choose how you use social media. I'm probably going to consume media from people that I care about so I don't spend my time just scrolling through Instagram and looking at irrelevant people and like I said earlier I spent a lot of time and money on shopping apps during this time I didn't have like social media to scroll through so I had to scroll through shopping app I just bought so many weird things during this social media digital detox time that i just keep wondering like for what like why did i buy these things so the solution that i have for that is basically to just delete these apps off of my phone because i do not need them i do not need another set of collectible vintage disney cups that i got from offer up and lastly another con that i found during this time was that i became out of touch about memes about what was going on in the world about celebrity gossip pop culture gossip which i think could be a good thing and also a bad thing it depends on your viewpoint for example, like I didn't know what the heck was going on with the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial. People would ask me and I'm like, I don't have an opinion because I don't even know what is going on. I didn't keep up with it 
online. And similarly, during this time, Taylor Swift released her This Love single, and I didn't know about it. So I had a bunch of people like texting me like, oh my gosh, like she released it. And I had no idea because I didn't have these things. So I would never have known that it came out. So the solution to this is literally who cares? Like girl, no one cares about what these celebrities are doing. I guess it's time to cut off my pop culture gossip addiction. The pros definitely outweigh the cons in this. And if you want to spice up your life a little bit or have a little life change, I highly suggest that you try this and you read the book because the book is pretty convincing as well. I used to be so scared of not having any social media and I used to be so scared of being left out and like having FOMO. I would never want to do this, but what can I say? It's life changing. You'll see. You'll see once you try it. That's all I have for y'all today. See y'all when I see y'all. Bye.